right, on today's roundtable, we are live from Muscle Island, and it's also episode 100. That's right. But, listen, come in a little closer. <laughs> this one is the last one that's going to be on YouTube, because we are going private to the app after this, but we couldn't hold this one from you. It's an epic fucking banger. Welcome to the strongest island in Ohio. That's a if, fact. Yeah, if you can't get inspired by this episode, there's something wrong with you. Yeah, Trayvon. Strongest island in the world. Yeah, facts. Facts <laughs> yeah, out here, Trayvon. Yeah, this is, this is just a great, amazing episode that you got to take notes on. Yeah. And especially for it being episode 100, the last episode to go public, I'm just saying, this is a banger. Yeah, I'll tell you what, like, uh, it was fun to do a show here, reflect on and talk about how we got here. And it's also exciting to bring the exclusive content to the Corey G Fitness app after this. But hopefully you're inspired by this. And we got Muscle Island merch coming, just saying. All right, let's go to the show. <laughs> Roundtable Podcast, I'm your boy, Corey G. That is small arms. Danny at Trey Speed in the graphic gangster himself. <laughs> Cole Susak, hold that thing, Cole. We are live from, from. Muscle fucking Island. And listen, in uh, great fashion that we always do at the round table, when we got new shit going on, we podcast at it prior to it being built. It's facts. What's going to happen? We did the same thing with the building. We did the same thing with the old building. We just been here. We're built to last. Cole is doing us a favor by holding this thing because it's buzzing. Yeah, we, got like, we got like physics shit going yeah, on. Yeah, shout right out here. to Ryobi. Yeah. Listen, you're not soft if you use a Ryobi cordless. <laughs> fucking battery powered chainsaw like your boy <laughs> right here <laughs> fucking shout out Ryobi because now you're yeah. powering the fucking podcast fuck with y'all literally <laughs> <laughs> so alright so uh, I want to get first off welcome to Muscle Island this will be one of many podcasts that we'll do here um, it's going to be an experience it's going to be lifestyle it's going to be business we got merch thanks to Cole yep, shout out coming dope, it's on the way yeah dope fucking we got a book <laughs> Shout out to Danny and his edit skills. And what I'm super excited about is not just buying a fucking island. It's about the mentality and what it took to even get to the point over these last 20 years to even get an opportunity to attempt to pull this motherfucker off. So I want to get some uh, just thoughts for you guys. You know, you've been here a couple times, Danny. What's what you're thinking when you're walking on when you're, uh, you know, getting from aboard of me being a captain of the ship (laughs) to. Well, I mean, kudos to your uh, method for anchoring, <laughs> anchoring yourself to the island. Corey throwing it like a kettlebell to yeah. anchor and reel himself My, my rotator's hurting a little bit, but we're good, though. Hey, it was better than the first time I saw you oh, do it. Oh, yeah. so much better. Um, I don't know. I think the thing that's the coolest is just watching it kind of materialize in front of your face. Um, and then when you're communicating what's actually going to happen, and then seeing it's like seeing it like frame by frame almost. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, going through the process of, like, you sending me the you know the audio and transcription for the book and everything like that and seeing that all come to life and then the merchant and apparel stuff or merchandise or whatever and then the meaning behind it i think that's what really like, kind of sets this in its own you know category of one i mean yeah it sounds ridiculous when you're like oh yeah <laughs> i bought an island cuz like i don't know the first first question is like how in the world did you even like come across it let alone mm-hmm. why did you even want to buy it you know um what I mean? so this is my favorite thing to tell people if you put a multiple choice down on things that would have happened a month ago <laughs> and, this, <laughs> and this was one of the choices i probably wouldn't have picked this one <laughs> so i want to know what the other choices would have been yeah i don't know <laughs> but i just don't think that would have been one that even like uh me and trey were talking off camera like i had only been here really one other time you know what i mean i'm not a boating guy Obviously, I mean, don't like I'm wearing like a boat shirt right now, but it's like I, I'm not this. I'm not like a water sports guy. I never I don't jet ski like so it's not really something that's on frame of mind. But I was just really looking. Shout out to Zillow. No free shout outs. Really just looking at property and opportunities in the area and looking for something that could create lifestyle for the family. Right. Something we could go close. So I was like not even super serious about buying anything up here. I was just looking around, like, what shit cost up a Buckeye Lake? Like, I just, it's 30 minutes from the house. Uh, Mark Wahlberg, shout out Mark. I know you probably listen to this. Not small. He, yeah, yep. Mark's not small. He just bought a house up here. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's Don't get it confused. I bought an island. Mark bought a house. It's cool. But he'll be here soon. Yeah, he'll be here. Yep. But it's like one of those things where I was looking, and then when I saw it, I just didn't know if it was real. <laughs> Literally, there's a picture on it, and it was like 
the lady had dropped it like X amount of dollars and I, I called Julie Dustin's wife and I was like can you call this dude and see if like is this real like where the fuck is this at and like then I start thinking could I buy a fucking island <laughs> Like, <laughs> dead serious. And then he yeah, was, yeah. and was then it. I was like, I've got to drive out and see if I can see it. <laughs> I drive out to see if I can see it, and I could see it from the backside, which no, I'm normally about the backside, Danny, but it was like shout anyway. Out shout out, yeah, yeah. So I, I saw it from the backside, and it just looked like a fucking train wreck mess of overgrownness, and I'm thinking, I don't even know what to do with this. But then I couldn't quit thinking about it. The next day, I, Peters was at the gym. Mm. And I was like, yeah, Peters, I'm thinking about buying this. Like, I don't know, there's this island for sale, Bucket Lake. He's like, I got a boat at Bucket Lake. <laughs> yeah, of course, this is in Brian Peters' fashion. <laughs> yeah. All you guys that work with him. I was like, well, can you take me out there? He's like, yeah, I'm available today. I was like, when? He's like, well, let's just go now. <laughs> so we fucking literally leave the office, go out here. He drives me out, and we drive around the island. And now I'm starting to get an understanding of how big it actually is. It says 1.25 acres, and you think that's not super big, but then when it's, you know, bordered by water, blah, blah, blah. And then I couldn't quit thinking about it again. So the next day I call my insurance agent, and I go, hey, can you take me to the island? I want to, like, stand on it. And that's where I got – it was over. That was a clincher. She brought me over here. She anchored over there, and she goes, all right. And I'm thinking – all right, shit, so I jump in. It's not super deep. Mm -hmm. So I, it's like over there, it's like five or six feet. But as I get closer, it's, you know, it, I can walk or whatever. And I get up on it. And as soon as I walk through exactly where we docked, that's where I came in, I felt the exact same way I did when I walked in the gym. Mm. Identical. And back to one of my daily fires I did yesterday, it was I didn't want to have future regret. If I started the process and I hit a hard wall where I thought – I couldn't handle this because I've never done anything, developed anything, ran utility. I've never done any of that stuff. If I if I found a hard wall where I just purely couldn't for, afford to try to pull it off, couldn't leverage whatever, then at least I gave it a try. No one's told me no yet, mm -hmm. and and that and now we're here. You know what I mean? And we're and now we got all kinds of stuff that's happening. So yeah. that that was literally my mentality. I looked up at the trees and I looked around and I was like, this is the wildest shit. <laughs> right now but I can't deny it why is it right in front of me like this why since 1930 no one's tried to build on this fucking thing well motherfucker I'm going to yeah you know what I mean so anyway that that's kind of the the framework of how we're sitting to this point yeah so real quick like it was completely overgrown so like as you can see now you've done some fucking yeah. work right so there's gonna be which I like too there's gonna be stages to the process and I think that's why people haven't even considered doing anything with nah. the island so, like, why don't you – because you always talk about, like, the vis the power of, like, visualization stuff. Mm -hmm. So, why don't you, like, talk about, like, what you saw initially? Because you talked about how, how you felt when you stepped on the island. Yeah. But what did you see? What I saw was um, I knew that <coughs> it's not a – I knew out the gate it's not going to be a traditional house. I've been obsessed with container houses for a couple years. I immediately thought I could put one of those containers on this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere I – I literally – Exact thoughts. I, yeah. yeah, exact thoughts. I can see water all around, even though it was like – so the whole thing of seeing through the trees is like a metaphor, right? Does that sound right? Like mm -hmm. Where people go, this guy can't see through the trees. He can't see my vision. Mm -hmm. I can always see through the trees if it's re if it's like really like, you know, something I'm into. And I could literally just was like the peace of being able to kind of take off out here. And I literally called Rachel and I was like, I'm going to fucking – buy this island and write a bestseller I literally know it I was like this thing is so peaceful all I can hear is birds and, and see the fucking water like it, it's it's undeniably just completely different and on top of it the business aspect the real estate all that whole thing I could learn and I needed something that was stretching me to learn more and, and also got me excited to build the businesses mm -hmm. because now I got a project on top of just working I don't know man it just I saw all of that pretty fast, and I already thought, like, could have a gym here. I mean, all that shit kind of rolled. But then mm -hmm. I was like, but can I pull it off? And I think that also challenge I, I enjoy, too. For so sure. That was it. Trevor, what do you think, brother? Um, So, first off, we roll up. The boats top off. So, Corey points that out, like, initially, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Bennington. <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's the boat. We just pull it up to the curb, yeah, Trey. Just, yeah, just, like, so to, like, walk through it. So, like. Corey driving the boat over first off. Like, never seen Corey drive a boat before. 
shout Pretty out to myself. Pretty um, entertaining. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's something he's experienced in. So that was that was that was fun to watch. Um, docking the boat too as well. Um, I was as we were pulling up, I'm like thinking in my mind, I'm like, he doesn't have a dock. A so plus right docker. Now. Yeah. <laughs> so I think this motherfucker is just gonna ram the boat into the side of the island <laughs> and throw it. I didn't give you island. a lot of context. Yeah, right? yeah, and yeah. We're just And we're just gonna jump off. And sure enough, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's why we got to do shows now, because no, at yeah. some point that won't be a thing anymore, exactly. Trey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to see that. So Roll I mean, up, yeah. throw the anchor on. Yeah, so we get, yeah, we get on. Um, obviously, there's like, there's a lot of just like vision you can see here, because yeah. there's literally nothing here yet. Like, it's not even like level, really, yeah. mean, completely. So like trees, it's overgrown everywhere. But you can see, though, like, once there's some shit torn down, like, it's going to be dope as fuck. Yeah. And, like, there's, you know, a lot of sun. The sun, you said the sun rises here. So, like, yeah. building the fucking container house it sounds like a genius idea. I think it'll be dope as fuck. Yeah, thanks, Trayvon. Appreciate that. And you're such a creative dude. Like, I think it's cool for you to see, like, this part of it, right? 100%. It was really hard to see. Uh, after the first session of cu me, Cullen, and Owen, like, we really had it down, bro. We got out here, and it was, like, so – because it all looked like that everywhere right so mm -hmm. when we first came here like i could see what i and i was like all right where the fuck do i start at it's like being dropped in the middle of the woods and be yeah, like yeah. make it look nice you know what i mean so what? we got the system dude shout out to the fucking rake shout out rakes rakes, rakes listen everywhere. just a fucking regular did rake. you use a hoe by chance no i will <laughs> No hoe? I wish I would have used a oh, hoe. You should have used a hoe. <laughs> I wish I would have called a hoe. <laughs> 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 anyway. Okay. All right. So as I'm using the rake, we'll call it a hoe. As I'm yep. using the hoe, I'm pulling back this is like a, a, a crap load of fucking vines. And then Cullen is on one side just chopping it with the fucking um, hedge trimmer on each side. And it's just like rolling like a carpet. And then mm -hmm. Owen's coming through with the fucking weed eater. And then we got a system... And as we worked from the boat, literally all the way to this spot, where Andon had his chair here, he was fishing, and we just had, like, one line, and I was like, it even became more true. And then we literally took one spot where I could see the water more. And every time I come out here, which has now been, I think, about four weeks where I've worked, the funny thing is I haven't even paid one payment yet. That's so nuts. I haven't paid one. The, the first payment's due in, like, a week, and I've got this much done. That's fucking crazy. No, yeah. So it's like one of those things where every time I leave, including this last time, which is where the home site's going to be, it's gratifying because I'm opening up what's going to be part of my like future kind of whole situation, right? And, and, and I talk about this generational shit all the time. This is what this is. Like, I don't know that my kids are going to want to work at max effort. Mm -hmm. Honestly, they're probably not going to. And it might be easier for them not to. But the reality is this could be in my family forever mm -hmm. if, if it – or whoever sells it one day, whether it's me or someone else, it's going to be worth a fucking chunk of cash. So that's where, like, when I drive by these other islands, they're named after the people that bought them or developed them. Now, I didn't call this Gregory Island or whatever. It's Muscle Island because if I don't have no muscles, I ain't here. That's I mean, that's just fucking fact. It fits the whole family. It fits the whole family. And, it, and I just – I started just thinking, like, live from Corey G's Muscle Island sounds fucking awesome. I yeah. can't so, wait to see a yeah. fucking flag, bro. Oh, dude. The flag. I mean, Marky Mark's going to drive by on some fucking yacht one day. That's what I'm saying. And He's see, see the you. Muscle Island logo on yeah. the flag. He's going to see you out there getting a, hitting some incline fucking. Yeah, I said, we're going to be doing there. 20, the 28 method. 28 yeah. method yeah. yoked as fuck on yeah. the beach. <laughs> What's up, Mark? You're looking It's small. undeniable. Good vibrations will probably just start <laughs> playing from the boat. Dude. <laughs> we should have like painting gate going in the background on a TV or something. That'd be fucking epic. So, yeah. So, anyway, it's a great movie, by the way. Yeah, I've never seen it. Oh, dude, you got to watch it <clears throat> maybe we'll do movie night with group Mark. yeah we should. you should you should you should you should the rock's in there too you should, you, should, you should get the rock out here yeah, too drop know? an invite you know? yeah. what's up Dwayne? Yeah, 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 yeah. what's up d-dog <laughs> so it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty cool all right cool what um, do you think buddy i think there's well while well, i've been sitting here holding the focus right uh <laughs> yeah, con conjuring my thoughts rubbing max's <clears> head um there, there's a few things i guess number one is from an overall perspective, especially like coming from the valley, this just goes to show if you don't put any limits on yourself yeah. of like what you can actually do. Like most people would be like, oh, I, I don't know if I'll ever be an island owner. Like you can officially say you're a fucking island owner. That's something yeah. that no one, even if they thought it was possible, they would say, I can't do that. Yeah, yeah. But like that's just good. I, I might have said that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, but th so that just goes to show what happens if you just take the fucking change ourselves and you can do whatever you want to yeah. do. 
Two, I think it's very important. First of, off, that means a lot coming from the Valley. Like, you one, know, one million when, percent. When, when, when I left the Valley, hearing a guy like you from the Valley younger than me say that is part of what my whole, like, plan was. Like, to have kids from the Valley go, wait, G is just like us. Yeah. It's just like being from fucking some inner city neighborhood or being from, from the country. It's all the fucking same. Like, people just all end up having the same mentality, and somebody gets out and does something that blows their mind. This is one of those things that I knew people would go, wait, what? Like, I don't even know how that's possible. And and even though I thought that, but then I thought, wait, it is possible. Yeah. And so that is such a fucking it's, important. It's part, really though. like the why, like the why not, like me not mentality, me. Yep. like mentality, because <clears throat> you can get so focused in on like this small town, like small mindset type thing. You gotta open that shit up. But yeah. this just goes to show if if you do that, what's actually possible. Yeah. Awesome. Two, I think. Uh, it really puts in perspective how important it is to develop the skill of like seeing opportunity, not just blindlessly going about, not really looking for change, not really looking for anything. But if you just open your eyes, you're like, all right, I kind of want to do something. Where can I do it? And you start browsing, doing some research, how instantaneous it almost pops up. <laughs> like once you know, you know. And then um, you just went through the same thing, Cole, with your house. Yeah, no, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. Um, I forgot what my third one was. Uh, It'll come back. Well, kind of going off of that, too, is just, like, one thing I – I mean, I think we've all taken away from you, but, like, me especially with, like, staying, like, battle-ready almost, you know, Mm -hmm. like being able to get get some skin in the game, like, if something does come up. So, like, this obviously fell in your lap. But, like, when, like, the max effort, like, being able to bind at max effort, that's, like, a perfect example. or to Being ready. Yeah, exactly. My last thing was how um, uh, going along with the opportunity is how important it is once you make the decision, you have to go. That's a fucking huge point. That That's one of the things that, like, <clears throat> as your guys' business partner, because part, all of us are business partners, right? And on top of it, like, being, like, your guys' mentor, I want you guys to take away the execution, like, aggressive mm-hmm. execution. Mm-hmm. That you guys have seen me now multiple times do six, seven-figure executions fast. Not fast because I was trying to, like, you know, over, but, but just it has I to made a fucking way. decision and get on fucking board. Yep. And, like, and you, you also see me be idle and just work. But then when it's fucking go time, it's fucking go time. And I think, like, if there's nothing else you guys take from me, that's huge. So Because once you learn that, <clears throat> you fucking kill everybody. Why don't you talk about that, though? Because, like, so many people, I'd say the majority are indecisive or they feel like they are, like, wishy-washy, right? Yeah. So, like, how do you – is that something you teach somebody or is it just, like, you watch by example or well, what? I think you have to have a uh, – back to kind of Cole always talks about <clears throat> the small wins, right? I think once – you have to remember things you have actually made happen. And then you have to take that and then put it on top of what's next, right? So, for instance, like, Cole goes and does this first house – or you guys get the smart contracts done for the NFT project. It's like the next thing that comes, why why not execute this just as good or better? Like, wh- why can't I then go and take that to a whole nother fucking level? Like, I think that some people hit so, like, for me, I think about what I just do with the building. What did I just do with fucking buying out John? What Like, why can't I go execute this? Of course there's a bunch of shit I don't know. But the reality is, I'm going to fucking figure it out. And I believe that I can figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I think that that confidence, and and I'll be honest with you guys, I think the reality of this entire thing is that I'm fucking not only battle ready, but my whole, like, discipline game is at a whole different level right now. You think all this shit, like, happened by accident? Uh, it didn't happen by accident. <clears throat> I'm going to go meet this guy real quick. You guys keep talking. I'm very bad. All right, it's cool. Kyle, are we good for a break? Do you want to take a break real quick? Right. You, you want to do a promo? Yeah, we'll do a promo. All right, we're going to take a quick break, then we'll be the back eye. with the round table. The round table broadcast is brought to you by the Arms Army. I'm Colonel Cole. With me is General Small Arms. And Danny, talk to us and tell the people about the 30 Days of 30 Inch Arms program. Yeah, if you're feeling, you know, a little small, you know, there is a, an arm program that is 30 days long, one arm workout that is stellar per day. Shout out to all the biceps and triceps out there. Yes. That will get you absolutely gigantically huge. So. Yes, there's proven results. You know, we had the first 30 days wave, but you can still go sign up. It's all max effort muscle. Danny, make sure you link this in the post. Oh, we will for sure. Follow the Arms Army yeah. um, on Instagram for sure. Yeah, and this is like some of our best work that we put out. I mean, it features workouts from Snooky to Wookie, uh, the Swole Tech 
spectacular or whatever. Yeah, we got like Obi Wan Swanobi. We got <laughs> we got Jar Jar Jacked. You know, yeah. Shout out Billy. He's been fucking crushing biceps yeah, every day. Yeah, basically so. everyone in your mom has done the thirty days of thirty inch arms, so you should too. All right, let's get back to the show, Mister Sea Lover. Hey, uh, we're currently on the Roundtable podcast. Uh, Corey's meeting with that one guy who was supposed to come out to the island. Did he tell you about that? But while he's talking to him, we want to ask you a question. So this is live for the Roundtable episodes, or the listeners, if you want to say hi. Hello. So, Tyler, what? so you've been heavy involved in the creation of Corey G's Muscle Island. So what has your thoughts been like? I, let's take us back to square one. What were your thoughts whenever you said, hey, I'm going to buy an island. I need your help. Well, I thought this this is definitely the most Corey G thing ever. Uh, I mean, it sounds random, and it's like, well, I'm going to go get an island. And most people might think, well, this sounds exaggerated, but I knew immediately. I'm like, well, it must be true. It must be an island. Uh, so anyway, I just thought there's no way that you say no, and you obviously have to be down for the ride. So I just said, whatever it is, if he's, if he's down to pursue it, I'm down to pursue it, and we'll just figure it out along the way. And yeah. I think so far. Yeah, absolutely. Dan, do you have a question for Mr. Sealover? Uh, what's your favorite bicep exercise? Bicep exercise? Um, the one where I get to watch you do them, Danny. <laughs> it's so hot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Tyler, so this has been obviously a learning process for – Corey, but talk about your, from your side helping trying to get utilities and all this stuff onto the island. What has that been like for you? Honestly, um, we've gotten to work. I've, I've been able to work alongside every involved body in the whole process. So, I mean, I all without having like a realtor's license, I basically served every part of the process of being a realtor. Um, communicated with the other the other realtor parties. Um, I mean, yeah, you, you just mentioned that getting a hold of all the utility outfits, understanding all the permitting, understanding real estate regulation in general, but particularly because this island started as undeveloped, meaning like there was nothing on it but trees and, and poison ivy. Um, so if you start from there, then it forces you to really learn everything from a legal standpoint, from a due process standpoint, from a construction standpoint, um, you know, quite literally developing it, putting all the utilities on there, then putting a like a housing structure, um, it, it's really forced us, but given us then an opportunity to learn all of these things and, and get it done the right way. So uh, from the ground up, quite literally, it's it's been interesting and it's been fun. 100%. Trayvon, you have a question for Mr. Lover? I don't know. I'm just enjoying the sun. All right, Tyler, well, that was a great interview. Thanks for joining the Roundtable Podcast live from Muscle Island. Do you have any final remarks for anyone listening? You guys have fun, and if it comes to buying an island or just doing something that you want to do, don't be scared. Just go figure it out. That's right. That's great advice. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sea Lover. Thank you. Peace. All right. Amazing. Well, uh, he's still in the meeting. Um, do you want to take? Do you want to take another break? Take another Probably. Break. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're gonna take another break. So another commercial. All right. One. We are back. Uh, yeah, this commercial is brought to you by Callaho. If you need something, <laughs> <that> okay. <laughs> 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 no, I actually, actually, it's a rake. I got a rake. The MVP here is the rake. I raked this whole fucking island, and it's really looking great. But yeah. I was just talking to a guy about a barge. Oh. So never rented a barge before. Okay. That's about to happen, so that's how we're going to – How big is this barge? That's a great question. Not like, like the ones we see back yeah, in the valley that, that, that like have coal on them. Yeah, that's, that's, or, what uh, keep coal, yeah. that's what I keep picturing coal, my mind. Coal, C-O-A-L, C-O-L-E, yep. not the coal we usually see. No, I think it's like – it fits a backhoe on it, so ho, yeah, and yeah. something else. So it's a decent <laughs> size. But that dude lives in Granville too. He's like, yeah. Oh, he's shit. like, I live by your other dude. Like he, he knows what's up. So him and Tyler can connect. It's gonna be awesome. He's like, That's yeah, sick. you know, we could bring him over here in a couple days, and you know, yeah. just make sure you got enough room but, for him. So whenever we face on Tyler, we got his perspective on just his learning process and going through yeah, all that shit. That's I awesome. think it's important to talk about like. Uh, we'll get to that, but yeah. just talk about how quick this process was. Like, from oh, yeah. whenever you decided, all right, I think I'm going to get this island to then just the whole thing coming. Well, and I'll tell you, so I kind of go back to, um, sorry, that was kind of an important meeting I had to dip out real quick. But, all right, so the the thing is, is that I found it on, we closed on, Jul- what are we, in August? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. July 27th was the closing day. So not it even was, a month. <laughs> yeah. Not even a month. <laughs> I found it two and a half weeks prior to that. So... If that gives you an idea, like, it literally went from I saw it on Zillow to I was signing paperwork 
in a creative uh, structure, which I think was also a big, a big kind of part of this, is that this lady had been sitting on it for since the 80s. Her husband passed away. This was his dream. And I assured her, like, I will make this thing sick. Like, you are selling this to the right guy. And I tried to do a cash offer. I tried to lowball her. Sorry. Yolanda is her mm-hmm. name. I tried to lowball her. She told me basically to fuck off. And then I was like, but here's what she didn't say. Just fuck off. She said, I'll take that and I'll, I'll own her finance the rest of it. And I was like, all right, <laughs> let's go. And so then on top of it, in part to your point about moving fast, she uh, looks after her 94 year old mom. So her schedule is a little bit, and we were supposed to close on a Tuesday. So, she, which would have been about three weeks. She says, well, I have to come in on Thursday before and sign the papers. I said, I'll come in on Thursday also. Let's just go ahead and do this. So I go in. I even close multiple days early. And at the end of the day, the speed and to, to Danny's point, I set up the line of credit to be able to move fast like this for something completely different. But I did it immediately when it was available on the building at the office. So I was literally in the best possible position to move right now Mm -hmm. and as soon as she said she was willing to do what she was willing to do it was done that's why i went in i was like i just make one phone call and we got we're at the table and so that right there for me was really cool because my whole life man i never really checked the boxes being an entrepreneur being a trainer figuring all this out for once not once but the last five to ten I've built enough assets where I could move like this. I've always wanted it. It just takes a long time when you're building from scratch, building from the valley, wherever you're from. And so to be able to say, this is fucking what I think I can do. And I've actually saved and built enough to be able to actually pull this off. And I can make the call. No, I can be there. And I don't need the bank to do this or that. It just, it felt really Mm -hmm. awesome. And I think it's given me the agility to be able to, to put a bigger deal together with this whole thing, maybe bigger than I even realize. So if I don't spend 10 years building those assets and doing those, then we're not sitting here because the bank would have never probably like financed me for this because it's so many unknowns. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, that, that is probably the thing I'm the most proud of right now. I'll be really proud when it's done. Um, but in the, the memories I can make, and that's what I like about the box hop guy He's like, dude, he's like, your memories with your kids and as they have kids, like that he's like, This is this is like this is some real like generational type shit, mm-hmm. dude. And he don't even know me that well. You know what I mean? So he don't know that that's been my narrative forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh talk about your learning experience with learning all the uh like I guess the regulations, dealing with all that yeah. shit, getting the pipeline. Talk about that process. Yeah, so as you're as you're watching this, there is no utilities on this. <laughs> There's no utilities on this. There's uh what are you looking at? You want to look at the check on the check the battery. What do you got, Kyle? All right. So there's no utilities on it. There's no way to get here. There's no you can't drive and park over there. Like you can only get here by boat. So by the way, like I don't know how I'm getting here in the winter yet. <laughs> I figured that out. I mean, I might snowmobile up in this bitch. I mean, who knows, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a thing, maybe. That's so a thing. yeah. <laughs> so we'll figure that part out when we get there. But for now, it's like <clears throat> completely raw. So what I love about it is the homie network, right? Jake Emery, I've helped him with his business. We're business partners in Max Effort. He's been around the gym forever. I start just, I always tell stuff to Jake about what I got going on. He's like, oh, I, I can bore underneath the water and put utilities on that thing. I'm like, you do that? He's like, yeah, I got a fucking machine that does that. He's like, hey. <laughs> I, got, I got a machine. Yeah, he literally, yeah, yeah. he's like, I got that. I'm like, you for real got it. He's like, no, no, I got it. He's like, you know, we had to go through whose property does it have to go through do we need an easement which means if you don't know what easement is does a property owner have to allow me to do it now i gotta be honest with you guys if that was the case i don't know if we'd be sitting here because to have to rely on someone else to give me the thumbs up i would have been rough but i figured out it's underneath the road the township owns the road i don't need nobody to say nothing they got to go from under the road under the water and pop up on this island and here's what you got to understand business-wise. It is not ready to build. We might be out here on the Ryobi thing right now doing this podcast, but this, there ain't nothing here, right? The dream, all that. As soon as those fucking utilities come through this fucking earth, it changes everything. Because now it's an island 
ready to build. Mm -hmm. And I get probably a $250,000 to $300,000 raise on my life as soon as that happens. And that's where, like, the opportunity is. That's Besides, the, like, all yes. the other things you want to do, that is the biggest opportunity. That's why it has. That's yes. why it's set here for this long Correct. with no one doing anything mm -hmm. to it. Because uh, this is a man-made lake, and i got to do some more research, but what I've been told, this part was created about, like, 1930-ish. It sat around here because I found fence. I found, uh, you know, stuff like this used to be a farmland. They hand dug most of this lake. This, this shit is old. It used to be mm. a canal system. And so the reality is it sat here because the people that bought it in the 80s knew it was going to cost a lot of money to figure out. It's a lot of paperwork, which is why I got Tyler, Tyler Sealover helping me because these operation skills are so good because I know mine are not. And it's like the opportunity is if I'm the person slash our team of people – are the people that find the solution to make it ready to build and then put something on it, that's where the win is. And in, in I guess, in development in general, that's where it's at. You take something that was nothing and you make it something different. Mm -hmm. And with the property raising up here and all the things going on, I think immediately it's a quarter mil to 300. Not something I can go spend at the fucking, you know, but it's like th from an equity standpoint that then I understand I can utilize – when I'm wrapping into a deal for the house, for other properties, whatever it is. And so that's where the opportunity is. And for me to understand that, because I've been doing shit for this long, I'm proud about that too, man, because I only know that kind of stuff because I've been in it for mm -hmm. years. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm excited now. Is that number 100 or 500? I don't know. I think it's 250 to 300. The bank will tell me maybe something now and tell me something very different, I think, two years from now, which is kind of mm -hmm. where my thought's at. So it's pretty good. Danny. <clears throat> uh, th I guess the only other thing I'm really like thinking about um, is kind of going back to uh, to Arnold, I mm -hmm. guess, because he's like the ideal example for someone <laughs> that has like done so many different things in his life. So he like, you know, hits a new stage or a new level, and then he reinvents himself again, and he then really he, does and a then good he, job of that. And then he reaches the pinnacle of that, whatever that is, and then it's like on to the next. Yeah. It's like I don't, I don't know if he like necessarily gets bored or he, he hits the top and there's nowhere else to go mm -hmm. or something like that. And so like that's where I feel like I, I'm thinking about like when people get older or when people get towards that like retirement age or something like that and then they like I don't know. It's like when you stop like exercising your mind muscle that you fucking yeah. just die, bro. Yeah. It's like so it's really cool and inspiring to see you do something like this to where you're like clearly the fish out of water. <laughs> oh, <You> literally. Literally. <laughs> like you really don't know what you're doing, but like it doesn't matter. Because no. it's just one thing at a time. Well, and I, yeah, I want to hit on that point is that everything about this process is uncomfortable, guys. Everything of it. I'm not an anxious person. What have you hated the like the most so far? Parking the boat. <laughs> That's been the worst part. That's the hardest part, right? It's the hardest fucking part. <laughs> Your like heart rate goes I'm up. I'm gonna give you that? guys. I'm gonna give you guys perspective. When we go out of here, that part probably is hard for most. But like that would probably what you just saw me do to get on the island probably gives people anxiety. Uh -huh. But I can only run into so much shit here. It's not a big deal. When I go back to the dock, that is my most stressful part. I'm more, I have more anxiety to do that than I'm when I interviewed Tiger Woods. That I'm being dead serious. I walked up to Tiger. I was like, "What's up, Tiger?" He's like, "Tying his shoe." He's like, "Hey, Corey." I was like, "Yeah, man. I just saw Arnold the other day. It was pretty awesome." He was like, "How's he doing?" Like literally that easy. Yep. When I get up here, I'm like. It's just the boat. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, the yeah. Boat. yeah. Not spending the money. You are more nervous about yeah. parking the boat than signing the papers to buy. Yeah, oh yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. <laughs> because I realize in the process. Wait a second. How am I gonna get there? Yeah. I'm buying this motherfucker. Well, the yeah. other thing is, so I'm it, about to splinter this. But dog. at yeah. some point, you're gonna be a sailor. Like you'll be good yeah, enough to where I'm you'll a, be out here on a yacht, just whipping around. I'm captain, bro. Like, <laughs> like I'm the captain now. <laughs> but here's the other thing. I'll I'll, I'll I'll talk to you guys about it. I was talking about before Frank showed up on his boat. Shout out, Frank. Yeah, what's up, Frank? Yeah. Frank's gonna help me get the barge, the uh, box hop over here. So, <laughs> what I was saying is that about four months ago five months ago ish when we started messing with the busy diet mm -hmm. and I started feeling very similar to I did first time anabolic fasting and Cole had brought this up he's like gee this is this is how that felt you know what I mean this is how we need to market it um, and then I started getting healthier and just the way I'm looking and feeling and training uh, the things that me and Trey been capturing in the morning have been super solid for you guys to be able to utilize for marketing and just me personally I've been fighting to get back to this for a few years since I hurt my shoulder and my right shoulder kind of hurts from throwing an anchor but whatever we'll get that figured out but it's like one of those things where 
And then I started thinking to myself, I just, when I got back in this area of the way I've been looking for a while and how I've been feeling and how I hopefully been inspiring more people, everything's starting to move again. And it's because my expectation of myself is different. Mm -hmm. My cheating is different. My drinking is different. I'm still doing all those things, but the strategies changed a little bit. Um, and then when I saw this, I was like, this is literally like not surprising. And I'll tell you what else is not surprising. I find this island, and two days later, Rolls Royce, fucking shout out Rolls Royce, they fucking text me and go, hey, your car's due for service. All right, cool. They can just come get it, so whatever. I'm like, I'm living that life. Come get it. Levels. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> and then a day later, they call and ask to buy it back. And, you know, I had to Rolls for like four or five years. It was a great, great, cool situation, and I got used to it. It was whatever. But in... Everyone can say that that's already had one, right? That's different than, than aspiring to it. But it was like, you know what? Yeah, you can buy it back. Keep it. They literally brought me a box of my shit to the office the one day and to check. I never saw it again because I was like, I got something else that is more important than my car, that's more exciting than my car. I can buy another fucking car. Can't buy another fucking island 30 that's minutes right. from my house. And every time I tell people that logical thinking, they go, yeah, you're right. There's a million other fucking cars out there. Mm -hmm. This is a one-off thing. This is a once-in-a-lifetime banger. And I would be regretting it in the future if I didn't put all my chips in to make it happen. And I think, uh, is that like a coincidence that they text me and asked about service and then asked to purchase it back? Mm -hmm. I didn't say, hey, do you want to buy it back? They asked me. And I was like, yeah. That probably makes more sense because now I have to buy a fucking boat I don't know how to drive. Yep. Because I got to be able to get to the island I'm about to buy. <clears throat> and on top of that, then I start going down the process of obviously Jake has the connection to be able to do this and this guy. And it's like no one's telling. And then the owner financing part with my money down, I already have the line. Like all of these things keep kind of stacking together. Because I'm going out into this process, mm -hmm. in my opinion, extremely uncomfortable, but very confident and disciplined. And I and I believe that through this, I would find out the solutions to then hit, get that opportunity to get that business happen in my direction because I earned it, bro. Because I took the fucking chance. Mm -hmm. And I said, nah, fucking, I'm going to take this opportunity. And then, yes, I don't feel bad about making that money one day whenever that comes in the future. And then on top of it, I was so inspired by all of this happening. That's when I got up that one day and said, I, I, I went train that morning. I can't remember what we did, but I came home and I just couldn't get, couldn't get it out of my mind. Like I kept saying, I'm going to fucking write a bestseller. Like it's going to be sick. Like when I get here, meaning like I thinking like after the house is built, I'm here chilling. Mm -hmm. And I uh, went old school on it. I just did not want, cause Danny always texts me like get the stuff in the morning whatever and I don't know if I shot him a text or not I think I might have you but did, I yeah, you did. yeah I was just like yo like I'm, I'm out I'm out, I'm out <laughs> of pocket I didn't want be scrolling anybody to text me I didn't want anything I literally turned my phone off on airplane mode I wrote an old school letter to Rachel hey honey I love you I should probably tell you that more often I literally said that and I go <clears> I'm going to the island first time I drove the boat by myself by the way I'm going to the island and I'm going to write a book and I'm going to just turn my phone back on whenever I'm done see you later and so literally just dipped. It was like probably 7.30 in the morning, 7 in the morning. I come out here. There was still a log across the middle over there. I put a blanket down and just hit my voice record. I had a, a – might still even be in the backpack. I literally had a mead notebook. I had some fucking bullet points, and I just went. Like three, four hours later. Surprise. I, I sent Danny seven audio files. <laughs> And and literally the idea for the book, Cole flips it to me in a fucking hour, and it's epic. The it was, fucking it was artwork. Fast. It was really, it was, real it was really fast. And I I told him, but I didn't tell him. But he knew exactly what I was after. <laughs> it literally, the fucking artwork is perfect. And I was like, I'm gonna call it. I bought an island and wrote a book, because that's really what I did. That's exactly it. <laughs> and I thought it would be unique enough that people that don't know me would be like, what? And then they would be like, and then they read it, and I think they're going to get something completely different than what they expect. Mm -hmm. It's really not necessarily about the actual purchase of the island. And maybe we can add something in the back that shows it on, like, a map and that. But the reality is it's <coughs> the 
mindset to pull off something like this. It's the confidence to pull something off like this. And everybody that has read the book so far, so the book is done essentially, and we have people that are that are already reading it, and we're getting quotes and testimonials from it. I got two messages on the way here about it that I was really happy to read. One from Lil Bobby, Bobby V. Mm. One from Tim Thompson. They mm. both read it. Um, I'm real proud of it, man. I think it's going to be something that makes people really, really stretch their mind and think. And Danny, you edited it, so what are, what are your thoughts on it so far? Um, <clears throat> you know, having gone through the process a couple times now with like the little book of consistency, you know, the confidence book and everything like that, this one was like entirely different because, um, I don't know. You were like, it almost like felt like you were like, I could like feel through like the transcription and everything that you were like in a, like a flow state uh, almost. So it made it, I mean, yeah, I've known you for over 10 years or whatever. So like, I know your tone of voice and how you talk and stuff like that. So that's helpful. But like, it was a lot. It was e- in a flow state. Yeah. And it was, but it was a lot easier for me to write. And to, to it honestly, it. when I read it back, it looks like almost like exactly what I said. Like you didn't have to edit a ton. You got yeah. Uh, I was just going to read the excerpt because oh, yeah, I, I, I think this excerpt's uh, really amazing. Go so ahead. this is uh, from expert one from uh, the I bought Island and wrote a book. <laughs> Sneak so peek. it starts out even at 15 year, 15 years old. I was aware that things were different for me. I always felt out of place and that I didn't belong there in the trailer. I felt and believed that I was meant to have dope stuff. <laughs> I knew my swag was different. I knew my confidence was different. Especially after after I started lifting weights with my grandfather. Lifting weights and seeing that first dealt cut helped me start to believe in myself. I started realizing, well, I'm probably not going to play in the NBA, but this weightlifting thing has really helped me build up. I love the way lifting weights made me feel because I knew I was making myself better. Yeah, banger. The dealt cut is one of my favorite stories, I think. I'll never forget yeah. it. I'm pretty sure I had a beater on. Shocking. And I was doing yeah. upright rows, yeah. and I saw this little thing right here, and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. I could see some of that going on in these other places, I'm fucking be dangerous. Shit starts to change yeah. whenever you see the first vein. Like the yeah, first true. bicep vein, whatever it is. First, yeah. That's first whenever it all yeah. changes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it Everything really, changes. It really just locked in. Like, I, I'll never forget that because I was like, man, I'm, I'm actually making myself better. Like, that's a thing. It don't mm-hmm. feel. It didn't feel hopeless. Yeah. It, it's the only way to like a lot of things. <clears throat> like in my childhood, just felt hopeless, man. Yeah. And so like when you when you grow up and you know you can change it, I think that and then you can do things that are like this. It's it's different. The book. What I'm proud about the book is, it is different than what I've written before. And I told Danny this multiple times since we've been working on it. I don't remember what I said. It's so just, yeah, it speaks I, to the flow. So as more, I, yeah. yeah, so as I'm. And I've heard that with, like, different artists before where shit just happens. I literally just turned that thing on. I had one bullet point. Mm-hmm. Everything that you guys read came off one bullet point for each chapter. And and then, like, as I do interviews uh, that I'm going to set up for the launch, I'm going to have to go back and read it multiple times because I know what it's about, but I can't remember exactly what I said because I was literally – and I almost recorded it at my house, and that would have been fucking stupid, right? Mm-hmm. Because I was scared to drive the boat by myself. <laughs> I'm being the honest. The environment, though. Too. It was the environment. Yeah. I was like, I need – this is literally what I'm saying. I need that fucking island vibe. Like, I need to sit here when it's in this state, which was weeks before this, right, where it wasn't even like this. It was mm-hmm. still, like, one path. I, like, I need that energy. Like, what I feel and capture in that fucking moment, that pace that I'm keeping – that excitement, like I need to capture that in this book because I won't be able to recapture it once it's de- developed. No. It's impossible to grab that. So as I was reading Rick Rubin's book, which Trey, you might really enjoy, and, and I, I think Cole I've, already I've, read I've, it, I've to is it. like um, it it was like talking about those exact type of things, mm-hmm. like to to really lean in that type of creativity, and it's like that was the day. And I could not wait to get it to you because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, when Danny gets this shit, he's going to know this is different. Mm-hmm. I knew it as soon as I was done. Well, I was like, this shit is going <clears> to <throat> fucking run. Mm-hmm. The t- two other words that stick out to to kind of describe it is like it's relatable and it's mm-hmm. actionable. So like meaning like it can relate to literally everybody, meaning if you came from the fucking valley or a trailer or something. Mm-hmm. But it could we've seen it because you've sent it to the fucking CEO of Park National Bank. Yeah, which is crazy. And he's giving you, like, the most epic review in the world. Yeah. Or, you know. That was really cool. So it, it's such a wide spectrum of, like, that uh, that it's resonating with or whatever. Yeah. And then, like, with as far as, like, actionable 
and everything like that. Like there's actual like concrete things you can take yeah. away from the book and begin starting to apply in your life. So I, that's I really, why. I really am. Uh, I feel like this next kind of part of my life is got to be really about pouring into other people, man. I just so blessed. And it's one hour. And it's one hour. So my whole thing with the this is my my <clears throat> whole thing with the uh, with the with the read. In one hour, which everyone has, by the way, you can be a person who likes to read, and it'll be refreshing because I think you get a lot of value. Or you could be a person that doesn't like to read at all, but you can still get through it and get something. So it's really for everybody, mm-hmm. and all you know, yeah, all shapes and sizes for sure. Mm-hmm. So uh, we need to take a little bit, a little bit of a break, and then we're gonna wrap this thing up. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. Uh, Danny just gave himself a new title. He is the first mate of the book and the master <laughs> seaman. There we go. <laughs> Congrats. Yeah. Congrats, Danny. Captain <laughs> seaman over here to my yeah. left, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Um, anything else you guys got? I mean, no. This is fucking inspiring. inspiring. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. just yeah. super crazy inspiring. Um, just, like, obviously, just, like, the story and everything just involved leading up to this point, like, makes me want to just, like, almost like so inspiring it pushes you into like a flow state like yourself you know what I mean mm-hmm. thanks Trayvon appreciate that kid uh, I'd dap you up Cole but you gotta hold the focus right you're the shot <laughs> focus right <laughs> shut up no but I think like that's what I feel and it's mm-hmm. the thing that I'm trying to attempt right so it's like that's what I think the sauce is in all of this process I just heard Inky Johnson say something really sweet it's like we all are engaged in our process so much in getting ready to be able to jump on shit like that. And that's what we have to remember. Like, those days that super fucking suck, like, we're getting through those because we want opportunities to change our families like this. And we're not guaranteed when they're going to come. I'm telling you guys, the three or four things that you guys have seen me execute that have been pretty fucking big doozies, you know, one of them I saw coming. (laughs) But the (laughs) other ones I didn't really see coming. But But I was ready to move... And I think, like, if I can get that through with this book, which I believe I did, because everything that people are telling me, that's what they're getting from it, then that would be, like, I'd be a, a really proud of that as, like, part of my life's work. That maybe people see the title initially and think I'm flexing because I got an island, which, by the way, is a pretty big flex. But now when people know, I ain't got to talk about it. It just is what it is. It's mm-hmm. a true fact now. But the fact that when they read it, it's really not about that. It's about that. I wanted people to feel the pace, bro. And when you read that, you can feel the pace of execution. Mm-hmm. You can hear the excitement, but I feel like you can hear the reflection. Because I'm sitting here, literally, I was sitting there that day thinking, <clears throat> holy shit, I'm in this motherfucker, <laughs> boy. I done signed the paperwork. It is happening. I got no choice. I can't come back from it now. Mm-hmm. So It's what it represents. It is what it represents. Yeah. And also, everybody that's involved with me, and has been. You guys have been around for a long time. We'll all get to take part in it in different ways. Like, I already see the NFT stuff we're going to be able to do. Mm -hmm. Not to mention all the other stuff that we do, right? Danny with the book right out the gate. Tyler helping with the stuff, like, just on the organization, like, Mm -hmm. and being able to do content here and create experience. And I think we're just on the front side of what this 1.25 acre property can represent for a little bit for everybody. You know what I mean? Not to mention, I think, the people outside that will read. And and, and so it's... it's an, it's exciting for me. So, sure. thanks for uh, helping me uh, kind of grab this and, and lock it in time, baby, sure. before it gets different. Roundtable podcast live from Muscle Island. I'm your boy Corey G. That is small arms, Danny. At Trey Speedy and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We are out. <laughs>